going on, Jets Nation, and welcome back to the Flight 5. You are what? live here. We are fully loaded in the room tonight. To my left, that's Mr. Wesley Sykes. Wes, what's up, brother? I'm about to get funky on the mic like an old batch of collard greens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, follow that one up. I can't, I can't follow that one up. I just want to say howdy, Jets Nation. I'm ready for today's show. I have a lot to say. Mm -hmm. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. I have a lot to say. But so how does I that do. change from week to week? That's what I want to know. <laughs> nah, it really doesn't at all. Bill? Will I go rogue or not? That's the question. question. Yeah. What's up, Jet fans? What's going on? And Christine? And this is for, for Frank. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Very nice. Ooh! We have a special guest on the couch, which you can't see, but we have to give her a shout out as well. Follow her on Twitter at peace and underscore Addy. Give her a shout out. She's on the couch. Oh, you did twist it over there. There we go. Oh, Wave, okay. everybody. Meaning that Nick's girlfriend is yeah. not a catfish. <laughs> Very it nice, is Frank. official. Well, we, do, we have a lot to get into besides Frank being an idiot tonight. But we have hired a new GM and a new offensive coordinator. Uh, the Jets have today hired, finally announced the uh, signing of John Idzik. He's our new finally. GM. And Marty Morningweg as offensive coordinator reportedly broken by uh, Kaplan. Um, what is, what's this for? Adam Kaplan, I think. Adam Kaplan, um, yes. So he, he tweeted uh, about it an hour and a half ago. So it really was a domino effect. GM came and then, then the offensive coordinator. And we'll get into whether or not, you know, whose call that was and do you guys agree with it and do you like the way the Jets are filling their open spaces, I guess you can call them. But we will be joined also by Jets defensive lineman and Pro Bowl snub, I should say, Muhammad Wilkerson. Around 720, he'll give us a shout. And uh, call, as always, 914-595-4871. We want to hear from you. And tweet us 5 and live and Skype us Zadalza, N-Y-Z-E-L-D-A-L-Z-A-N-Y. Um, we want to hear from you guys. But before, you know, before the Wilkerson call, before everything else, John Idzik is here. He's officially the GM. I'll read the uh, little statement he had and Woody Johnson made earlier. The Jets have named John Idzik as the team's general manager. The announcement was made by New York Jets chairman and CEO Woody Johnson. Woody said, after a thorough search in which we, went, we met many qualified and outstanding candidates, it was clear to me that John was the right choice. During his two decades in the NFL, John helped build a Super Bowl champion team in Tampa Bay, an NFC championship team in Arizona, and most recently a team in Seattle that narrowly missed the NFC championship game. John has seen firsthand what necessi what's necessary to construct a winning team and had worked with some of the most innovative and successful coaches in the NFL, including Pete Carroll, Tony Dungy, Dennis Green, John Gruden, and Mark Holmgren. Mike Holmgren. Drawing on 20 years of NFL experience, John working with Rex will get the Jets to where we all want to be. And Ed Zick put out a little statement. He will be introduced officially on Thursday. I think that's the 24th of January at 11 a.m. Um, you can see him there. Idzik said, I am honored and extremely excited to be joining the New York Jets. It has been very enlightening getting to know Mr. Woody Johnson, Rex Ryan, and Neil Glatt, and I am very grateful for them making me feel very welcomed as a member of the Jets family. I am eager to get started building the foundation that is already in place, which I thought was interesting as well, because that leads us to you know our first topic of the day. Of the day. Is Idzik the right man of the job for the job? And, you know, the, his ties he had with his father being here as well, um, which was similar to, to Gamble, the guy who we didn't hire. Who knows what really went on there? And is this hire kind of show that Rex is really calling the shots right now, especially with that uh, morning leg official announcement, too? But first off, guys, and I'm going to start with you, Wes. Is Idzik the right man for the job for the Jets right now, the hole that they're in and climbing out salary cap and talent-wise? Yeah, you know, I see where a lot of people kind of have a little bit of a, uh, uh, a pause for concern a little bit with him. He gets labeled as this cap guy a lot, and I think Eric Weeks of the Jets blog, he kind of did a great job kind of uh, dispelling that theory and that myth of him, uh, so to speak. So I think he's a lot more than a potentially just a, a cap guy, which is something that definitely needs to be addressed with this team. Uh, you see a lot of, of contracts that are bloated, at, like kind of absorbing up a lot of the money right now, particularly, you know, Rebus, Sanchez. Harris, Brickashaw, all those guys. Uh, so that so that's good. If they can kind of free up some cap room and a little bit of wiggle room to bring in more players, I think that's great. And uh, when you when you kind of look at it, he um, has a little bit of a tie with Matt Flynn. So if he's a guy that you kind of want to approach mm -hmm. and bring in a new quarterback, uh, you know, he may have a little bit of a tie and a connection there to kind of draw him in. So I mean, initial <clears throat> response, I like it. Frank, um, I, I I'm not a big fan of it to be quite honest. Um, I don't like to judge people unless they start actually doing whatever they're supposed to be doing but and you know I'll have more opinions on John once he makes starts making moves and cutting players and bringing guys in but 
from my perspective, when I read about John Idzik, um, you know, I read stuff like, you know, he oversees player negotiations. He, you know, deals with the team's compliance with the NFL salary cap. He's in charge of, you know, player personnel transactions, all football operations budgets, staff and team contracts, team travels and aspects of day-to-day operations in terms of financial, in terms of financials. So, to me, he is more of a cap guy. I mean, I'm not saying he hasn't evaluated talent because he has. If you look at his resume, he has evaluated, evaluated talent. But from my perspective, I don't want a guy that has anything to do with the cap. So to me, I was, uh, I was more into guys like Gamble. I wanted to pop. I like these guys because they do bring – or even Sunquist. I liked a lot. I was reading his football expert blog, and he obviously knows how to evaluate talent. I'm not saying John Idz- Idzik doesn't, but the fact is – there's only a limited amount of things you you can do in a day, and he spent a majority of that doing a lot of cap and budgets and, and contractual type of stuff. He wasn't just a football oriented, uh, you know, player personnel evaluator. He was doing the financial stuff, and he was doing this also. So, to me, listen, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna you know come on here and say I don't want John Idzik. I'm not gonna say that, but. I wanted somebody else, and I don't think that somebody else wanted us. So that's why I think we ended up with John Idzik. Interesting, Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you know. At the end of the day, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust the the process that they went through. I know process. that's Hashtag that's a, that's, a, that's a dirty word, but I'm gonna trust the process <laughs> and 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 rely on the fact that the Jets knew what what didn't work here, and they brought guys in, and and they they uh you know ran this guy through uh, tons of questioning, and and he was the right fit. For, for the plan, um, you know, looking from the outside in, as we do as fans, you know, we want the best guy, we want the best uh, talent ev- evaluator, we want the best salary cap guy. I'm just going to trust that the team, um, you know, brought this guy in and uh, made the right decision. What else can we do, Chris? Then I'll let you. Then I'll let you backfire to that. Well, point. I think first Frank. of all, based on the guys that we heard were sort of finalists, I think he's certainly. Um, the top of the list if it was truly was con and cohen and him then i mean yes i'm happy mm-hmm. um i know there's a lot of hesitation from people about him being a cap guy like what wes said um again you look at his resume beyond what he did at seattle and i also think it's my understanding and speaking with people and sort of reading that even though his do- job description says he did a lot of cap and contracts things that he actually was involved in and i what we uh, interpret as kind of a little bit of a rebuilding in Seattle, a very successful one, and that he definitely had a hand in that beyond just contracts and negotiating with agents and stuff like that. That's my understanding. Yeah. So, um, you know, I understand what his what his bio says, Frank. You right. know what I yeah, mean? I and, mean and so when you read that, you're like, oh. I mean, but he also really had a strong hand in, in developing a Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals team a few years later, or a few years earlier, excuse me. So, um, I feel I feel good about this. I feel mm-hmm. like because we do have salary cap issues that need to be addressed. We do, well. and, and, and choose to be more critical when we see what he does. Right, right, yeah. exactly. That's and, and that's and that's my kind of answer to wrap up the whole um, go around here. And I think everybody made good points because there is a little difference in, in opinion here, and that's always good. You know, you don't want to have the same opinion five people. What's the point of listening? But right. I, I like like Bill said, which I agree with the most. I'm going to leave it up to the guys. You know, they brought the firm in here. Um, people got on Woody Johnson for really not having the football smart. So what did he do? He went out and found people that do do this f- as a profession. And it just came out recently that Bill Polian was in the room during these interviews, and he's a guy who was very well respected. The Jets went to him actually to see if he'd be interested in GMing the Jets, and he said he wasn't, but he kind of gave the okay for Caldwell. He was very big for Dave Caldwell, who went to the Jaguars, and apparently Polian did the same thing with the Jaguars when they hired a GM. So I kind of you know I'm. As, as a fan, I'm happy because it's a new guy, it's a new regime, it's a new start, but they're also keeping the guy who I wanted in place here, and that's Rex Ryan. So if Rex, you know, this is it for Rex, it's make or break now because it, the spotlight's on you. This is your call, this is your offensive coordinator hire, which we'll get into in a little bit. But the fact that they wanted it, Zick, for a few days now, apparently. He was a, he was a late on the scene. Yeah, for thing. a few days. Yeah, that's that's well, that's well, the key well, to the that, key, what well, you just well, said. Well, I understand Corey what you're saying, Perry, but for a few it, days. Not gonna, that's, they're keeping everything quiet, everything in-house, which is completely the opposite of what the Jets used to do. Right. Everything was out in front, and you, the fans knew almost just as much as the inside knew, and that's not good. So, I, the, so how they kept it, and it kind of leaked late, made it seem like, okay, maybe this guy was – the guy, the dark horse the whole time. And he was coming from Corn Ferry where he led the search for the Seahawks a few years ago when they hired Schneider, who's mm-hmm. going to probably win exec of the year. 
that he may have or may not have some history with with Idzik. You never know. He he maybe he was in house at the time. May have talked to him like we did with Cohen, and he said, you know what, you didn't get the sh- he didn't get the opportunity in Seattle because we didn't think he was ready yet. But a couple years now later, he has a shot here, a fresh start to bring his guys in, and we think he's ready for this job. He so. does run a tight ship. Yes, and that's great. Yes. And I love tight ships. You know, right. there's not like and a tight ship. So that's, true. that's a good thing because we need that with Rex. So. Yeah. Just do, <laughs> looking over a little bit more, I mean, this guy is a smart guy. He d- graduated from Dartmouth with a degree in mathematics. He was magnum cum laude. Cum laude. <laughs> wow, I just butchered that one. You've been to Starbucks um, too many times. Way too many times. You. I'm buzzing right now. <laughs> but, no, this, but, you know, this guy is very smart. Not, to add to that, he has a history of coaching and playing um, professional and, and college football, which which goes a little bit more than more than just a Mike Tannenbaum 2.0 sort of guy. Mm. And you look at the teams that he, that he uh, worked for were the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Seattle Seahawks, and all those things have all those three teams have one thing in common is that he was a big part of the rebuilding process. When I think you look forward to the Jets, that's kind of what you're trying to do with the Jets right now is a rebuilding process. Even and though it's they probably will never come favorite. out and say that, right. but we yeah. all know. But, but we, we all, all know. Yeah. Yeah. The, how how bad was Seattle for so many years? How bad was Arizona? How right. bad was Tampa Bay? You know. To to kind of move on to what what you kind of brought up before, Wes is. Or Frank, I believe it was. Was this the, the taking so long and dragging this out now with just a week until the Senior Bowl now? You're already at Championship Week. Was this the Jets and, and the new firm doing due diligence and looking at every single candidate out there? Or were there some guys that you know the Jets zeroed in on and wanted to end this a week ago and, and hire them, but the candidates didn't want to come here? I'm a, and I'll, I'll start with you, Bill. Do you think it was the Jets just taking their time and very thorough, you know, situation here or you think nobody wanted this job um i think th- there was definitely guys that didn't want this job and then i also think the pro the the, the due gil- uh, the due diligence was uh you know a tough one was very yeah was, le- led the way here um so yeah i'm gonna side with the due, dil- due diligence chris due diligence no stone unturned you know <laughs> <laughs> No stolen on um, slash two hundred k per candidate. Exactly. Let's go. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I think it was maybe a little bit of both. I would like to, you know, I think definitely they wanted to get as many people in there as they could who had all different kinds of backgrounds and all different kinds of, you know, philosophies or whatever. But I mean, I'm sure there were people who, as soon as they heard that. Rex was going to have to stay. They were like, "I'm sorry, that's just not for me." So I mean, and maybe that got blown up into we can't give away the job and what it, what we ended up hearing from you know various people um so i think maybe just a little bit of both probably frank what do um you think? i think it was a uh i think it was a lack of interest more so than due diligence if you look at what happened today john idzik was hired and then immediately after marty morningway who we're going to speak about in a second mm-hmm. he was hired as offensive coordinator which tells me or he was announced excuse me which means to me that pretty much Marty was in already. So if you're telling GM candidates we have an offensive coordinator that we picked and we have the salary cap situation and we have Mark Sanchez you know, on, on the books for another year and you can't, you can't not bring this up, but a lot of guys don't like coming to New York. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It, it, it's a scrappy place to be. If, if you don't fight and claw your way, you're going to get run over. A lot of media coverage is here, especially with the Jets, who are number one in the league in media coverage. This is a tough place to be with all that being said. So I think they just had to go through all these guys because a lot of guys didn't want to come here. I don't think Gamble wanted to come here. I don't think Caldwell did. I don't think Khan or any of those guys. I think Idzik was kind of a guy that wanted to take his shot. And, I and you know, I like the fact that he did. But so did Pop, though, right? Yeah. Pop wanted to yeah. come here. So, I don't know, one or the other. But well, I think I mean, we don't really know exactly what happened with Gamble. I know you And I don't think speak, anybody but, will ever know because, yeah. you know. He kind of just dis- it yeah, sort of just disappeared. Like, we don't, have to. We don't yeah. have to know. He might have been catfished, Gamble. <laughs> he might have just been, like, you know. He might not fly under real. the radar so he doesn't have to be on TV or he something. He might not you even know? be real. Gabe, yeah, you know? that's true. He, he might be the cat. You saw one picture. <laughs> only, yeah. There's literally only one picture of him yeah. on the internet. Like, when you look up his name, and Nick like, took the, the picture and put picture. him on like the New York Jet logo. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, what, uh, what, what's, your, uh, what's your opinion on that? I know I, you have a, you kind of have a little bit of a different one. Yeah, I um, 
It's very rare that I side with Frank. I'm going to side with Frank today. Um, High five. There we go. Up We're the same shot. High yeah. five. There we go. But yeah, I think it's a little bit of a lack of interest when it comes down to it because mm -hmm. uh, you look at kind of this phrase that I like to use is fitting round holes into square pegs sort of thing. I think I screwed that up, but you get the idea. <laughs> is that you, know, you have Rex Ryan there, which may not be the most likable guy to... Uh, you know, incoming GMs. You have, uh, you're, while you're looking for the GM, you're looking for an offensive coordinator too, so he doesn't really have his say in what he wants in there. You have a lot of uh, cap issues that need to be dealt with. You have the bright lights of New York you have to deal with. Yeah. It's a lot of things that may not be as attractive to that. And I think if you kind of, I think they kind of put their hats in on Tom Gamble early and kind of speaking on that, you know, I know we've talked about this in the production meeting when, you know, Brian Bassett of the Jets blog kind of came out and broke that story that Tom Gamble was going to be the guy. You know, he even said it in the article and, you know, I know some of us know him here. It's very rare that he kind of comes out and breaks these sort of stories unless he's serious. So, right. you know, I think there was something that kind of shook him up like we were just saying and, um, I think that was the guy that they, they might probably would have wanted. And I, I don't doubt Brian in that, but I think that uh, something happened, he pulled out, and they had to go and find for plan B, Back plan C, or drive. whatever. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I, I you know, I, again, it's it's hard to come up with a new idea or opinion here when, when we have so many, but I, 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 th I think it definitely has to do with more of a due diligence. I know that they offered the job or reportedly offered the job to Caldwell, who went to Jacksonville, and they offered him that $1 million housing uh, clause in the contract and who knows what they did and but apparently he asked for it with yeah, apparently he had asked for it oh the jets weren't just offering it he no, had he, asked for he, it like it, yeah he yeah. asked for it like, oh, okay. it's like a you know and a mill woody johnson that's, like, yeah. it's like that's a, pretty it's like a dollar gangster. fitty to you yeah, right. frank <laughs> but i don't know I, I think i really do think that going through the, the process <laughs> and everybody hates that word but i think from about a week ago when idzik was was brought up he was kind of mentioned, like, okay, maybe this guy is a serious thing, and you had people, okay, Cohen's out, okay, Khan is out, okay, it's now Sunquist, uh, Sunquist comes up, and he's one of the front runners too, coming from uh, Denver, who I would have loved to to come in. He was actually the guy who I wanted to bring in here because he has the GM background, and apparently he had a few run-ins with. Uh, Shanahan, and that's why he got the raw deal. And Denver fans were clamoring for him to come back. They loved him in Denver. The Denver media liked him. He's a very likable, very likable guy. And he had that website too, where if you want to read into the mind of him, and it's just great. It gives you kind of like an inside of, of how. Does anybody remember the site? Football Expert. Football Expert dot com. Football Expert GM dot com, I believe it is. All right, something like that. If you want to just search his name, it's a great site. It kind of gives you inside the mind of of a GM. You know, you don't really see that anywhere else. But I, I can't. I can't. Not, I can't knock the move, and I can't, and and I respect Woody Johnson, who I'm very hard on. Everybody knows that. For the whole corn fairy thing, at first when I saw it, I was like, oh boy, what's going on with this? And then I read into it more and read in how they've done this in Seattle, and Schneider's a great GM over there, who's built probably one of the better teams, who are going to be good for quite a while as long as Russell Wilson keeps up how he is, how he played this year. So I I can't knock the the the, the whole process I, and. So I think it does have to do with them really wanting to buckle down and find the right guy and not slip up and and end up in the same situation in three years. But um, moving, let's let's move on to the offensive coordinator because that is actually what matters most is what's going to go on. We all know Rex's defense is going to be fine, top ten in the league. They had their issues this year against twenty six against the run, but second against the pass. And overall, I think they finished what eighth yeah, overall eighth. defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, top ten again for Rex Ryan, and it was a down year. We'll be joined by Mo Wilkerson in a few minutes too. On uh, you're listening to Flight Five. If you want to give us a call, it's nine one four five nine five four eight seven one. Tweet us, Skype us, do all that good stuff. We're here. We want to hear from you guys, especially about the GM and coordinator naming. Because last week we were here on Friday and we had nobody. We didn't, we had just named the defensive coordinator. Thurman again. We had no GM, no idea who the GM was going to be, no idea who the coordinator was. And fast forward a week, just three hours ago, we have pretty much the whole thing filled out. Um, but off of the coordinator, Marty Morningwick, he's very, you know, he's he's done it. He's done it all. He's been offensive assistant, assistant head coach, a head coach, now offensive coordinator with the Eagles. Um, he's had some very successful years as an offensive coordinator. What do you guys think? You like to hire? I'll start, Wes. What about you? What do you think? Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of options mm -hmm. uh, to work with here. He's obviously uh, worked with the West Coast offense pretty uh, pretty extensively. Of course, that's what Mark Sanchez kind of came out of at USC. So 
you know, if you kind of want to go hop back on that horse with Mark Sanchez, no, uh, fans are probably going to kill me right now for saying that. But, you know, that's still an option. That's something that's out there. And also brings up many other options, too. You know, that system can be molded to almost anybody when you look at the free agents that are out there, whether it's a, a Matt Moore or Matt Flynn, mm -hmm. uh, even a, a Michael Vick, although they didn't have the best relationship together. You can certainly draw ties to that. Uh, Alex Smith, especially. So there's a lot of different options in there. I particularly like it because uh, I, you know, Fans hate hearing about uh, Sean Green and kind of bashed him this year, although I thought he had a pretty good season. But uh, you look at these running backs who are so successful, these pass-catching running backs, much like LaDainian Tomlinson, uh, that's, what, what, that's what the Jets were missing last year. So you look at someone like Bilal Powell, Joe McKnight, maybe they finally get used in a, a passing situation under uh, Morning Way. Frank? Man, I hate being negative. Uh. <laughs> You got to mention the process, by the way. You know, there's a drinking game going on. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, seriously, yeah. it is Friday I mean, night too. Yeah, it's I, the pregame. <laughs> All right, guys and gals. Um, I'm not a fan of this. I'm, I, the it's the thing I'm okay with. I am not a fan of Marty Morningweg. Um, I'll get into it after we take. Um, yeah, I think you know, this Muhammad's is uh, call, Muhammad. But. Muhammad uh, woke us in with a defensive lineman for the Jets. Mo, you there? Yeah, what's going on? What's up, Mo? Hey. What's up, man? How you doing? Everything's good. Uh, you know, we're finally at peace. You know, the Jet Jet Nation was a little uh, worked up about the GM not having one so late. I guess you could say late into the playoffs and off season. But um, with Idzik here, we're kind of excited to see uh, how the roster shapes up and who's gone and who's coming in. So right now, we're uh, we're a little bit better than we were three hours ago. But uh, it's good to hear from you. How's your off season? Uh, so far, it's going pretty good. Just relaxing, uh, spending time with the family. That's about it. So you you in New Jersey? Or you guys you go away for the off season? Uh, I'm in I'm in New Jersey right now. Once I start working out, I'm heading out of Jersey. Okay, nice. All right, well, what, uh, Mo, we're gonna put you through a uh, a little um, five segment here, the cover five that we do with everybody, and uh, I'll start off by mentioning the fact that a lot of the Jet fans thought you had a Pro Bowl year, and obviously you had a, a hell of a sophomore season. Um, Pro Football Focus named you to their all sophomore uh, team. Do you th do you feel snubbed by not being on the Pro Bowl team this year, or you know is it just you know something that you can just look past and get ready for next year? Uh, it's something I look past. Uh, my teammates, some of my fellow teammates, and, and uh, guys, you know, coaching staff thought that I should have made it, but uh, you know I didn't. But uh, that's just you know motivation I have going to this off season. Uh, you know, prove that uh, I'm worthy of playing the Pro Bowl and. You know, hopefully make it next year. Uh, Mo, you know, you kind of had a, a great second half surge of the season, kind of really exploding on the scene. You're drawing nicknames from uh, players like Sione Pua calling you dangerous. You're getting called, uh, you know, Motron, Motrin by other players and, and writers around the league. So definitely causing headaches on the offensive side of things. But uh, did you notice a change in how you saw the game? Did it slow down for you at all? What propelled that level of play over that second half of the season where you, you really excelled? Uh, just, just believing in uh, the veterans I have and the coaching staff and Coach Dunbar helping me out with my, uh, you know, my technique and my, uh, you know, clues to what I have in the game and just taking preparation throughout the week with practice and taking it to the game on Sunday. And what what was the difference between the first year and the second year? Of course, the lockout had a huge thing to do with uh, you know your preparation heading into your rookie year. So how how different was this second year in comparison? Uh, the game definitely slowed down for me, and um, I just was just playing more fast. I wasn't out there thinking, trying to figure out what was going on. I was just reacting on the, you know, on the go, and, and just trying to help out the defense and make plays. Hey, what's up, Mo? How you doing, man? What's going on? Hey, not much. Um, all right, I have a question for you. All right, the Jets D line this year, you guys played. For you know, fairly well, I would say, all around. But the defense was ranked 26th against the run. Why was that? Rex Ryan is usually on top of that running, you know, D. What happened this year? Um, anybody can, you know, have their, their week, their day, whatever. And, um, you know, so maybe, you know, guys are just not always in their gap, you know, trying to, you know, make plays out of, out of their gap. And, if, you know, in this league, you know, you've got good, good running back, so... You know, you might get caught in the wrong gap, and that might be where running back hits the right gap, and you know he's off to the races. So, this guy's not just being in their gap, so you know, getting gaps down. But you know, I felt that as the season went on, we got you know control of that, and we held that. Do you think it was a linebacker issue, or it was more a defensive line issue? It was no nobody's issue. It was just the guys just not 
doing their job. That's all mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. So you and Quentin Copels were both first round picks in back to back years and you know, you guys are sort of being brought up to be the anchor of the defense for the years to come. So is that something that you guys have talked about or is, what does it feel like to kind of know that and have that in the back of your mind? Uh, we know that we're young guys and hopefully we'll be here for a long time, so we're just gonna keep, you know, showing progress and making progress on and off the field to better ourselves as players on and off the field. Now, are you guys close? Are you guys buddies? Yeah, we're we're cool. Um, we both went to you know we went to first school together. We right. talk. We always talk. Right now, he's back at home in North Carolina, but eventually we get together just sometimes. I'll see. Mo, Mo, fans say you play with a quiet uh, a quiet rage. Can you describe what you do as far as a pregame preparation from a mental standpoint? Uh, but really, just listen to music and. That's about it. You know, get in the tune and get ready to be physical with somebody and come out with the victory. What's your What's your favorite kind of music? My favorite kind of music? I listen to uh, rap and a little bit of R&B. Who's your uh, favorite rapper? Yeah. <laughs> Love My favorite that. rapper? Uh, t- right t- now, I will have to go with uh, Meek Mill. Oh, oh okay. Philadelphia. All right. I see, you, kid. All right. We uh, again. This is uh, Mohammed Wilkerson, Jets defensive lineman. Definitely follow him on Twitter. That's at Mo Wilkerson. Give him a shout out. Send him some love. Uh, Mo, we're gonna put you through a quick lightning round here. It's really a uh, quick one answer or a short sentence, and we're gonna go pretty quick. But uh, I'll start it off. The Jets got some uh, big bodies inside on the D line between uh, Pua, Devito, Kendrick Ellis. Who have you seen that eats the most between the three? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I gotta go with uh, I gotta go with Kendrick. Oh, uh, what Kenrick. What's the most you've seen uh, Kendrick eat? He probably we went out to eat. He probably ate about good, you know, two full plates, <laughs> nice size plates. <laughs> Not just no regular evening plate, nice size plate. God bless. Nice. You guys close out those all-you-can-eat buffets, right? Pretty easily, I imagine. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All uh, right, you know, I remember your Lime Green Challenger pretty well, uh, mostly because uh, you almost ran me over one time at MetLife <laughs> Stadium. But that's um, neither here nor there. You seem like a real car enthusiast. Uh, Beamer, Benz, or Bentley? A Beamer, Benz, or Bentley. I just, I don't, I don't Benz, Benz will do with me. The Benz, Benz is fine with me. All right, mayonnaise colored Benz, we're pushing Miracle Whips. Uh, again, American, <laughs> American Muscle or European Performance? Say that again? American muscle or European performance car? Ooh, uh, I gotta go with the American muscle. That's right, made in the USA. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mel, this has been a big topic with uh, with Mr. Manti Teo. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you were getting catfished at any point in your career? <laughs> oh, man, that's y'all crazy. <laughs> I don't got no comment on that one, man. I'm not commenting on that. No, you know, there's girls smart. There are women. I I I know you're active in on Instagram because I do follow you and and Twitter. So, do you ever? I mean, there are women out there that are that are fake, legitimately fake. So, I mean, I know they show me. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta be aware nowadays. You know, 2013. You know, a lot of stuff goes on. You're smart. Gotta be aware. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Very wise. Mo, you, Mo, you helped lead the Linden High School to two state titles in basketball. As, as a matter of fact, are you are you the Michael Jordan of the Jets? Uh, what? Are you the Michael Jordan of the Jets? Nah, nah, I'm no Michael Jordan. No, I'm <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> okay, fans really like to kind of uh, see the other sides of players. So, do you have a celebrity crush? And if so, where would you take her on a vacation? <laughs> Well, I have a, whoa, these, these questions now. <laughs> nah, that, that, that's, that's a hard one. I don't know. I, that, that put me on the, on the spot with that one. I don't know. I, I can't answer that one. Okay, all right. No celebrity crush. Well, it doesn't well, have to be one. You it doesn't have to multiple. be your favorite. Just like, you know. Not so. It's too many of them. Okay, that's a great answer. Uh, Mo has enough love to go around for everybody. That's great. That's true. All right, one last, Mo, before we let you go. How is, uh, you know, and we've seen him on Twitter, Carl Dunbar, the defensive line coach. What is he, um, between, I know in your rookie year, Mark Carrier was here. What's the difference between the two? It seems like it seems like uh, Dunbar has really made an impact on yourself, Quentin, DeVito. Is he as good as uh, advertised? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. He's a great guy, great coach, and um. You know, does a real good job of helping us, you know, 
focusing on, on you know offensive linemen keys on how to you know beat them with the, you know with their poor technique when we find out watching film on them. He's a great guy, and I'm glad you're here with us. Absolutely. All right, Mo, we appreciate you taking the time out. Um, have a great off season, and hopefully we'll talk to you as uh, next season approaches. Go kick yeah. some ass. All the best, dude. All right, thanks, Mo. Thanks, Mo. All right, cool. Thanks Bye. for having me. No problem. All right, thank Take you. Good luck. All right, guys, that, uh, All right. that call was sponsored by Murano Landscaping. We're actually going to go to break. We'll play a little video from Murano. Definitely check them out if you're in the Westchester area. That's from Marinick, New York. They do a great job. Big Jet fans over there. So check them out. Watch the video. We'll come back. We'll get back into the offensive coordinator. Hopefully take some of your phone calls at 914-595-4871. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing what Frank's got to say about the offensive coordinator because we kind of cut him off. We'll be back. Flight 5 Lab. Yes, he did. Right. <laughs> Established over 50 years ago, Murano Landscape is a family-owned and operated company based in the Maranac, New York, that takes pride in offering superior quality products and services. Here at Murano, we use our expertise in landscape design to beautify the exterior of your home or business with the addition of a new lawn, trees, shrubs, flowers, rocks, mason work, and many other distinctive decorator items, which only a true artisan can install properly. Our years of experience in commercial and residential landscaping Coupled with our dedication to doing professional work, ensure that your grounds will look better than ever before. By calling us to do your landscaping, you get more than just a job. You get the environmental designs and ideas of an expert in all fields of landscaping and hardscaping for residential or commercial properties. Call Murano Landscape at 914-698-4065 to take advantage of Ameranek's best landscape ideas for your home or business. Oh, hey. What's going on? <laughs> All right. This uh, Flight 5 Live, as always, since its initiation, has been sponsored and supported by Laricia Water and Cafe SA. If you want the best of Italia in the United States, definitely check them out. You can go on laricia.it um, to, ch to uh, purchase some of the best tasting water. I know that really doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but... It's great water. It's got 99% less mineral content than 99% of waters out there. Go, sure. go figure. So sure. it's great yeah. stuff. And Cafe Essay is another product that they um, that that is in correlation with Laricia. They're both imported in, in the United States. And espresso is the new thing. People are getting away from drinking coffee, moving on to espresso. It gives you less of a crash, and it's not as... You know, you don't get as jittery and, and, and twitchy off espresso. So um, definitely check them out at Cafe SA. You can Google them and the water at laricia.it. Drinking the water right now, by the way. Just got to want to do a little product placement. It's the best. This is actually the sparkling water. So. Product placement is supposed to be when you're not holding it in front of the camera. It just like <laughs> That's happens true. to be there. That. All right. Oh, I'm, I, I also have to give another shout out. A great Jet fan and uh, Nicole Esther is a sales associate with Remax Country Realty and of course a diehard Jet fan whose business is built on the promise of exceptional customer service. Whether you're so selling your home or searching for that special place to call your own, you deserve to work with someone you trust and someone who has your best interests in mind. Nicole's office is located in West Mil Milford, New Jersey, but don't worry. She does business throughout the entire state of Jersey. If you're interested in buying a single home, a townhome, condo, co-op, or multifamily, it doesn't matter. Nicole does it all. If you're thinking about selling, Nicole has a proven marketing plan to provide the maximum amount of exposure for your home. Contact Nicole with your needs and let her get you started today on your next real estate purchase or sale. Call Nicole at 845-590-7959. Log on to NicoleEster.com. That's N-I-C-O-L-E-E-S-T-H-E-R. Or send her a tweet at NJ Realtor NIC. And let's go Jets. All right, guys, let's get back into the offensive coordinator situation. We kind of cut uh, Frank off when Wilkerson called in. But, um, Frank, we were seeing uh, – do you like the do you like the hire and, you know – the way the offense, the way the coaching staff and front office is shaping up, do you like the direction it's going in? All right. Well, at this point, we have Marty Morningway, so I don't want to sit here and just you know rip the dude. But based on what he's done throughout his career, which stems from his days being the head coach in Detroit, and pretty much being an offensive coordinator under Andy Reid, and if there's one great offensive mind in the league right now, maybe the best, it is Andy Reid, so he's almost like the Mike Pettin of offensive coordinators, if you want to say that. Um, 
like that. Yeah. yeah it's kind of cool. how I look at him. That's and cool. when he was a head coach, he went 5 and 27. Nice. That is awful. But you isn't know? that kind of irrelevant, though? Because he's not going to be the head coach. It's not irrelevant for one reason. The Jets' offense needs to be taken hold of and totally controlled. No, absolutely. But so, I'm just saying, like, but I'm saying from like a success a standpoint, like the guy was not even close to successful as an offensive coordinator. He failed miserably. I mean, as a head coach, excuse me. He failed miserably as a head coach. He was five and twenty-seven. Um, obviously, he doesn't do something right throughout the day. If he failed that bad, he did see forty-nine interceptions in two years at in Detroit. So the fact that he was like head coach and saw forty-nine picks, um, and then we. Combine that with the fact that we still have Mark Sanchez. That's just scaring me. It's scaring me. I don't want to see Mark Sanchez and Morning Way together. It scares me. But I think the fact that he did learn a lot, probably under Andy Reid, I assume, um, makes me feel better about the guy. But I don't want an old dinosaur. I don't want a guy who's 50 years old who. What, what, what kind of energy is he going to bring? I wanted a young guy, a vibrant guy who's going to mm-hmm. come in and and, and and shaping things up and bring a new mentality. This guy's been in the league since 85. Like, why, I mean, the idea of Pep or somebody like that. Like, he's been coaching right, since 85. Yeah, like he's younger, been in the league the since 95, guys. excuse me. So yeah. the guy's been around forever. I uh, yeah. kind of wanted someone new. I don't want another Bill, what do you think? That's, I, I can definitely agree with that, Frank, but Bill, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna say, I, I agree with Frank. I'm going to say no. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about it. Um, I don't. I think you know they had some great talent over there in Philadelphia, and, and like you said, Andy Reid, um, the the guy's an offensive genius. So you know how much was Andy Reid? How much was Marty uh, Morning Morning Wig? Um, I will say I like the change in philosophy that he brings, though. Right. Yeah. More of a passing attack. I'll take that. Chris. I mean, I kind of feel the same way. Um, you know, I, I much prefer sort of what he's known for, West Coast air it out kind of thing. Um, Did you just throw up a gang sign, Chris? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I didn't. You the West Coast gang uh, sign. Right West there. Coast, um, <laughs> would she say that she did if she did? Yeah, I, yeah, I actually did. It was totally intentional. <laughs> um, and, you know, so I like that. Obviously, I, I, I talked last week about how I don't like the idea of somebody like Cam Cameron. So, I mean, in contrast to that, you know, I'm glad they, they didn't go that direction. Mm-hmm. And Norv Turner wasn't really available. So, um, of guys that we are sort of household names, sure, um, there, there are some other guys I would have rather had. But um, I'm not, I don't hate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. I- I could see I could see where the hire came from and obviously this is a Rex Ryan hire. He has he has a good relationship with Andy Reid, so I'm sure Reid gave Morningweg a vote of confidence. So that that kind of makes you feel a little bit better. He's had a lot of offensive play calling uh, history which Sperano didn't have and that was the big knock on him. So Morningweg has called plays before and his offenses are, you know, he's had some some of the you know, top ten. I think seven out of his ten years as a coordinator have been top ten offenses. So that's good. He's got the resume. He has the history, but I have. To, I just. It goes back. I just want to change your philosophy, and I know that this is. This is more, and Frank loves it. The attack style offense. He's going to throw the ball. He leans more towards, you know, the the passing game than the past few guys we had. Who Sperano was completely all about the running game, and Rex wants the uh, ground and pound word and all weather offense dead. Which you know we could probably put that on the he dead board if we bring it back. The word ground and pound. But um, now we're going to attack. Now we're, we're going to attack. That and Morning attack. likes to attack, and so I like where he's coming from with pistol. that. If the pieces are in place. Um, I, I just I, I wanted somebody fresh. I wanted someone very motivated, and and I wanted a guy from maybe even the college ranks or someone who hasn't really gotten that shot. Kind of like what they did with uh, Idzik uh, as a GM. Yeah, I wanted yeah. someone who was very hungry, not someone who had uh, the resume and background. What do you think, Wes? Uh, you know, I, I I like this move. I think I, I said that before, uh, just to kind of uh, combat what Frank had said. I, I don't think it necessarily matters uh, what you did as a head coach. It doesn't mean you're doomed as an offensive coordinator. I think you look at plenty of head coaches that just didn't work out. That mm-hmm. we're better off as offensive coordinators. You know, not mm-hmm. everyone could be like an Arian, uh, Bruce Arians here. You know, you look at a guy like Josh McDaniels. He didn't have a good run in no. Denver and kind of tripped over his own feet there. But he kind of picked up the pieces back with New England and kind of has that found that kind of young genius uh, label again. But I, I like Morning White. I actually think that outside of the quarterback, which is a, a huge question mark for this offense, mm-hmm. there's not many question marks on this team. You look a little bit at the tight end. I think with him I in place, it's wide receivers. I think it gives Stephen Hill another year to develop. He's that big body presence that you need in the, in the red zone area. You have Santonio Holmes, barring that he comes back from the injury okay, and Jeremy Curley, and then maybe a Braylon Edwards to kind of make Nick happy there. Make uh, me uh, happy. That, that's, not about that's a that. pretty decent receiving <laughs> core for a West Coast-style offense that likes to run 
um, parallel to the line of scrimmage. So I think, mm-hmm. I think it works pretty and well. But, you know, but piggybacking like, off that, we need a running back that can catch yeah. balls out of the we backfield. Also, because what, that's big in the West Coast offense. Mm-hmm. If you look throughout history, you look at the San Francisco 49ers yeah. when they had Montana and Young. They didn't have a every down smash mouth running back. They didn't need one. You look then to... Um, Andy Reid in Philly, they Brian Westbrook, they weren't smash mouth run football. I mean, throughout in Br- Brett Favre in a West Coast style offense. I mean, you need a running back that's gonna come out of the backfield and catch balls because that's what a West Coast oh, yeah. offense is predicated on. You know? we, what you were saying about how we don't really have outside of the quarterback. I mean, we have people Keller and Green being the two that we're talking about the most mm-hmm. with contract situations. Because mm-hmm. likely not both of them are going to be here. So what is happening in the tight end position? What's happening in the running back position? There's lots of work to still be done on the line with contracts as well. So mm-hmm. that's why I do think it is a little bit more than just mm-hmm. about managing the quarterback. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Definitely, definitely, very, very good opinion. And I also want to take a Twitter. I want to get the fan opinion because they are tweeting at us and we do have Hans as always Skyping in. We're going to bring him up there in a sec. Uh, Crazy Chipman says he thinks the Marty move is safe. It's a safer bet than a guy coming who would be more hungry because we need that experience to be that guy on offense because Rex really doesn't have that offensive grasp, uh, t- a grasp on the offense that you would wish as a, a head coach, but how he handles motivating and, and defense is you can't look past that. But let's bring Hans up. Uh, let's see what Hans has to think about the offensive coordinator. If you guys want to Skype in like Hans, because he does it every week, it's Zadal's at NY, or give us a call, 914-595-4871. We're going to try and get uh, everybody up there. But Hans, what's up, buddy? I'm going to come to the defense of Morning Wig on this one, no, guys. Um <laughs> Zev Zippany, who writes for TurnOnTheJets.com, another good website, who everyone Great should website. be nice plug. on to. Uh, he threw up some of uh, Morningwig's statistics. Mm-hmm. One of his statistics was actually from before he was ever associated with Andy Reid. He was with the 49ers for four years. 1998, overall number one offensive coordinator, and obviously with all that stuff. He has a career average of 7.4. So honestly... That's really it's good. Like, like whatever Nick said earlier, it's it's a safe bet. It's a good bet, and I believe that he can really get this stuff done. And I know that Frank talked. You talked about him not being a good head coach. Wade Phillips and Mike Malarkey weren't good head coaches either. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. So. He, it, when you have that, if you really have that expertise on one side of the ball, going from that and having to handle and motivate these grown men playing football for a lot of money is a, is a it's it's a lot different than really handling that one side of the ball which you're you know great at and I want to read some more tweets because we are getting some good stuff Britt Slow says I'm I'm in the wait and see mode right now depending on what we do with personnel is key especially with the offense quarterback change is needed Um, GMF1369 says morning wag means Jets will convert to West Coast offense the roster does not have the personnel to make that change Uh, Hans I'll throw it to you because yeah he's absolutely absolutely right about that he's right and I'm going to ask you Hans before we let you go because we're going to talk about it as well where do you see or end two part question what do you want the quarterback to, to position to look like for 2013 I'm honestly not sure yeah. I'm probably thinking we'll probably sign like Matt Moore or something but regardless we can't have a starter from day one of training camp absolutely not right unless you yeah unless there's like a big trade or yeah. a signing who knows but Hans yeah, we just, appreciate it as always but absolutely no, just to take throw off, take care bud thanks Hans appreciate it just, no just throw something out I understand that you know the fact you failed as a head coach doesn't necessarily mean mm-hmm. you're going to fail as a coordinator. But Marty Morningway, as an offensive coordinator, he's been with Mariucci. He's been with um, Andy Reid. I mean, those are two great offensive minds. So I, I want to see him really be able to take charge of this offense because he's going to he's going to have to do that. That's right. I think right. that's totally fair. And I, yeah, and that's what a head coach does. They take charge of the team but again let's wait you know Britt's so right yeah. Yeah. Britt Slovak like she's yeah. so right that you really do need to wait and see let's see what his what his moves are and I think the first move all we can all agree on is who who the heck is the quarterback right. who's sure. he gonna who's he gonna put mm-hmm. front and center as the quarterback mm-hmm. coming into the offseason and that's the biggest move of yeah, waiting for it yeah. you know 2013 can I can I just bring something up um you know, I express a lot of concern over like that they were conducting these interviews with, with the OCs before they had hired a GM. Now, I don't, we don't know the timeline of when it was like we're going to idzix the guy, and then if that sort of set other things in motion. But the timing of the two announcements does seem like well, at least idzix on board with this this hire, and maybe he was a, he was 
asked for approval on it or whatever before it's they point. made that announcement. So, you know, maybe they have a plan in place about about all of those things, these things that we're talking about. I don't know. I just thought that was worth bringing up and, and timing-wise, so, you know? Because that's yeah. what that was, that was my one problem point. with the new GM and the new regime that we're bringing in is there can't be a disconnect. Right. Everybody, from the start especially, with anything yes. in life, at the start, everything has to be, everyone's on point, everybody's on the same page, and let's go from there. It can't be... I want this, and this is Rex's guy, and you have to put up with Rex, so therefore you're also putting up with his coordinator. There's going to be a cluster, you know what, in, in everything on the team. But um, it's yet to be seen. Hopefully he is on board, and hopefully Morningwood can kind of move this offense to more of the attack-style offense that Frank likes so much. And, but and, and, we know, and that was criteria when these guys came in for mm-hmm. the interview. And, yeah. and, you know, that can be another reason why it took so long is because let's face it these big names you're going to hear like Tom Gamble they're big names they know they can get a big job somewhere maybe right here wasn't the the place they wanted to be yeah so i wonder if they will make a change at receiver coach because Let's face it, Sanjay Lau didn't no, really I, do too yeah, great of a job th- last year. I mean, maybe that, that'll probably come down a lot. They also had, yeah. I think that's a tough thing to kind of blame him on, though. I mean, did he really? Was he really given the fair shot? You, let's say a lot of these guys were, uh, you know, we see Rex talk about in the press conference saying that well, we had a lot of injuries, and he immediately points to Dustin Keller, and he immediately points to Santonio Holmes, and then you, you look down the list, you're dealing with, mm-hmm. I hate to say it, but scrubs and rookies for the rest of the. But it season. wasn't just those two. I mean, Curly was battling this and that all year yeah, long. Yeah, absolutely. Stephen Hill was got you know yeah, yeah, this and that. And so I I wonder if it was a, a strength and conditioning and a something that they were doing in practice. Yeah, the combination of strength and conditioning and a wide receiver coach thing, because there really was a lot of soft tissue injuries this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on that on group in particular. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, where let's let's talk for quarterback for a little bit. Um, where does this leave the Jets right now with the morning wink hire? He likes to run that offense that we were talking about. Wes, where's where where does it leave us now, and who do you see fitting in this morning wake style offense? Listen, this this morning wake style offense, I think, is great for for the Jets. Like I said earlier in the show, because it leaves them with many options. It doesn't really pin them to one particular quarterback that they mm-hmm. have to fit into a certain type of system. I think there's a lot of different options, including uh, Mark Sanchez, as I said earlier. If they, you know, that, which is definitely a possibility. All these guys who are just set, coming out and saying that it's a foregone conclusion that he may not, he's going to be gone with the team. I'm not so sure if that's entirely the case. He does have that huge cap number. And the Jets don't really have a lot of cap room to work with, right, mm-hmm. as of this current moment. So it's certain a possibility that they can get back on that horse again. But you think Mark Sanchez can run a West Coast style offense? No, I mean, he he is a he was labeled coming out of college as a West Coast, yeah. uh, you know, game manager sort of thing. You know. Um, yeah, I think he can. Yeah? Okay. I mean, whether he can do it well or not, I think that's what his style suits him. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm totally with going into free agency and getting a quarterback, um, getting a guy like Alex Smith, who I didn't really I want originally, guy, yeah. but in terms of running a West Coast offense, Alex Smith would be great for that. I mean, that's sort of kind of what he ran with San Fran. So I like the fact, you know, three-step drop, five-step drop, find your, find your lane, make a quick decision. He did have the least amount of turnovers in 2011, and this year he had a 70% completion percentage before getting benched so he does take care of the football now I mean this is the type of quarterback we're getting now not the Alex Smith of five years ago I do like that I also like Matt Flynn I think Matt Flynn could come in and do mm. something he's still on contract he's still you know a con- uh, on the books with you know he's still a right. contract guy with Seattle but we do have our new GM from Seattle so that's a possibility. Maybe, Maybe he'll work something worked out. out. Yeah. Absolutely, and that was the biggest decision that probably we asked in terms of you know who we wanted to bring in. What are you going to do at quarterback? Would be my first question for a right. potential GM. Maybe it was Matt Flynn, but I do like the West Coast offense. But again, we need to find a running back, and I know Powell and McKnight could be that guy to come out of the backfield, catch a lot of balls, and a quarterback that can make great decisions and fast ones. So yeah, absolutely, we'll see. absolutely. Bell, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's just it's really got to it's got to be up to the it's got to be up to the owner and this team to realize that it, you got to change the face at quarterback. You know, something you want to talk about philosophies and uh, and uh, play and and what who does what who fits where. Sometimes sometimes you just need a, you need a fresh face in there. Chris, I mean, I think with the way that Mark played in that last game, I just can't. I fathom, you know, entering the season with being like, we're going to try it again. It can't you know, happen. It, can't it just happen. can't, can't happen. happen. It really so, wouldn't surprise me, though. I mean, it wouldn't, but I, I, I yeah, just, I, mean, I will be, <laughs> I will not, 
I will not be shy in being critical. Right. Um, about Alex Smith, I, I have a concern, speaking of like head coaching, uh, coordinator kind of thing, same thing, that he was successful because of Jim Harbaugh, in, yeah. in part. Because what we saw of, of him before that happened, sort of, I'm still a little on the fence about him. I would almost rather have somebody like Matt Flynn because I think he kind of has higher upside. Yeah, um, I agree totally. Definitely. So, you know, if we're going to go get somebody who, who is available, I would almost rather go in that direction. Yeah, yeah. and if you look too at, um, basically if you look at Matt Flynn, he does fit the mold of, of a guy that Marty Morningway right. could, could bring in and play well. I mean, Sling he does it, like to spread it out it, and, and yeah. does like that West Coast style. It's interesting, though, now that we went, because Wesley and I earlier actually went over a lot of what these offenses are based on West Coast and stuff. It's interesting because usually in a West Coast offense, you don't really run the ball much because it brings the safeties up and a lot of your passing game is short. So you're kind of throwing into like the fire yeah. by th- running the ball, the ball and then throwing a West box, Coast. Yeah. And that's basically what we've tried to implement in the last like two or three years is like a, a ground and pound, but a short passing game, like like as if we're running a West Coast in connection with a ground and pound, which just doesn't fit. Mm-hmm. Basically, I mean, it doesn't fit at all. It's not like the spread and the shotgun. Those fit. The pistol and a run heavy, those fit. But a West Coast and a ground and pound, like we were running with a lot of slant games, that doesn't fit because you're throwing to a safety who's standing right there. He's not 15 yards off the ball. He's six yards off the ball or eight yards off the ball. So it, <laughs> we need to do something differently. I'm glad we are. Yeah, it's, and, it's a very yeah, – mm-hmm. go, go for it. Uh, so yeah, no, I just wanted to uh, come back Christine's point a little bit. It's just – yeah, my, my issue with uh, w- with Matt Flynn is that it's the same issue of why I actually fell in love with Kevin Cobb la- uh, a few years back is that he had three or four great games winning NFC Player of the Week or Player of the Month or whatever and had these 300-yard games, these great games. And then he goes off to Arizona and you're like, well, was this the same guy that I saw in, in Philadelphia? Yeah. Like, what happened to yeah. him? You know, the same thing with Matt Flynn is that he had two or three great games that really were these wow moments. Like, I can't believe he had these 500-yard, 400-yard games, whatever they were. And now he, he played only in two games a year before. He hasn't played at all this right. year. What are you going to get from him? That's, and that's my question. I guess you don't really know. And his two huge games were against aw- yeah. awful secondaries, too. You look at his two huge games against the Lions and, uh, the, Patriots. And, the Patriots. and the Patriots. No, absolutely. I, I, and maybe it's just because I feel like I know a little bit about him because I just have – Followed his career since college a little you bit. You met more. him? Wait, what? No, I just know. I'm just saying, like, maybe I just, like, Kevin Cobb, you know, being in the family with an Eagles fan, like, I, I feel like I knew a lot about him, too. So I was not surprised that when he got to Arizona, I was like, wait, this is not, you're not yeah. getting who you think you're right. getting. Mm. But with Flynn, I feel same way, but more optimistic, mm. I guess. Gotcha. Yeah, that there makes is, sense. There is Sorry, more I just kind of. For, for yeah. Flynn. And my right. question about Alex Smith is, you know, I, I hear with a lot of players, a lot of th- times, like, oh, you know, he was really a, a Harbaugh guy or he was so and so's guy or right. whatever. You know, who's to say that he can't take the tools that he learned Absolutely. under John Har- Jim Harbaugh and, and, and take it forward with him? You know, just Absolutely, because yeah. he's not with the coach doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to lose everything that he had with him. So that, you know, I mean, that's a, something to think about. Another interesting cool. mix is just yeah. if we go with, you know, uh, Matt Moore, you can implement. Right. A run heavy game with Matt Moore, who doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He has six three. He's a you know kind of a big dude. He can run sort of an offense that it would seem like Rex wants to run, which is mm-hmm. this. He, Rex still is going to want to run the ball. I mean, I, it's just it's just what he loves. He yeah, loves, you don't change overnight that drastically. Yeah. And he saw a Super Bowl. He was right there when Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl, and that's what they did. They ran with a rookie Jamal Lewis, and they played great defense. So. In the back of his head, he knows that's the way for him to win a Super Bowl. And he got pretty close. I wouldn't say very close, but he almost got there doing that. So for me to believe that we're just going to switch everything and go completely with this, like, West Coast and spread it out and get a running back out of the backfield, catch a lot of passes, you know, Brian Westbrook-esque, I don't see it. Yeah. I don't. I think it'll be a mix. But I think we'll still, we're still going to run the ball but look at more all than you know, the 90% of teams. The hires around the league that have happened this year. Every head coach, per, you know, new head coach hire has been a, an offensive guy. That's and so true. I think that just the league has spoken in terms of, like, what's happening. And what's happening right now is, I mean, yeah, you can win that way. You can. It has happened before. But I just think, um, you know, with what's happening 
Yeah, Rex I, that's is going to plug up. Sort of what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do feel a little more comfortable now, especially because the way the league has gone with very pa- pass happy and Morningwake has a lot of experience with the passing game. It's not a guy like, oh boy, he runs the ball and he's going to come here and try and start passing the ball. He ha- he's ha- he has had a lot of experience in Philadelphia with Andy Reid, and maybe who knows, bringing a guy like Flynn over here, he finds that magic with Morningwake because he is he has been successful throwing the ball. But I do, you know, I do think that quarter back coach who we are going to need a new one because Kavanaugh is no longer here. He went to the Bears today. I saw that. And uh, I'm excited for him. I'm a fan of Matt Kavanaugh. I'm, I'm upset that he's gone from the Jets, but I'm sure he'll do fine with Cutler over there. But it, it's going to be interesting to see who Morningweg brings as a, a quarterback coach. There really hasn't been any rumors or names. No, there in, was in there. last week. There was a guy. Well, David Lee. Well, under Morningweg, though. It's going to be. I think yeah. this would have to be a morning wake call. They have Absolutely. that guy in Absolutely. place now. I'm, I think David Lee's going to move on. I don't think mm. he wants to Hopefully, come here as well. I don't. That yeah, would be. You can't run a wildcat with Marty Morning when it's never happened. And I think Thank something God. that we could all can agree on is that all the quarterbacks that are out there and that are available or that are on the table, whether it's Michael Vick or a free agent or, or Mark Sanchez or Tim Tebow, none of these guys are going to be the long term answer for this team. And I think that's safe to say. I think it's going to be a stopgap for whether it's someone in the draft or a free agent next year. I, you know, I haven't looked at the 2014 free agents yet, but. You know, wh- whoever that may be coming down the road, I think it's it's just going to be keeping the seat warm for whoever that is. Unless you do bring a guy in Flynn, and he's still young, he's he's never I'm, you know I'm not never sold had. On. He's so young. Yeah, but if he does, everybody has questions. Everybody, very, has everybody a does. Yeah. But that could definitely, that could be the one guy that you could have a future with. Exactly. And maybe Matt Moore too. Fair maybe. enough. And that's and that's another. That's why I keep saying upside mm-hmm. with with Matt Flynn because there is so much we don't know there that the possibility of. What could happen? And if you look you know? too, look at the Baltimore Ravens right now. Their defense, their I don't think their defense is as good as ours. I might sound crazy, but I'll take the New York Jets Much defense older. over the Baltimore Ravens defense right Especially now. Especially losing Ray Lewis. Ex- exactly. And with our weapons, you have Curly, you have Holmes, you have our offensive line, which is a very, very good offensive line. So I think that if we can get a quarterback in there, get that defense back, get Revis back, and, and get something going on offense, I don't see why we're not in the playoffs and, and, and at least winning Completely game agree. one. Mm-hmm. Look at Baltimore. I mean, they have a couple. They have nice weapons. They have Bolden. They have Jacoby Jones. They have Torrey Smith. But they, they're nothing special. I'm you not sitting there like, wow. You have to at least once yeah, a year. They're yeah. well you balanced, even think about it. Yes, yeah. you have to be well balanced have, in the NFL. You, know I mean? you can't have one glaring weakness like we did this year on offense and expect to win in a league that's ultra competitive especially right. with the you know young guns like RG3 and Russell Wilson's coming out like you need to be balanced everywhere or you're going to get exploited and I think with Marty Morning we we're making the next step but again I want to just see what this guy does with the quarterback yeah. I, that's his first that we'll know right away if they're sticking with Sanchez we'll know that these guys really don't know what's up mm-hmm. in my yeah, opinion it's 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 good it's good to see that hopefully we're we're towards a new kind of regime at, on offense and hopefully we make the right choices and hopefully we bring in a completely new offense because I think everybody agrees that we need that and we do have some weapons in place with Holmes and Curley like Frank said and it's interesting because Morning Wig was the offensive coordinator with Philly and they had receivers like Deshaun Jackson and Jeremy Macklin who can you can kind of compare their game to Holmes and Curley so that'll be interesting to see as well but we are running out of time here and we do have about a minute and a half left and I want to go around the room really quick guys and, and see. If and Addy you're, you're answering this question too. Yeah so we'll let Addy answer Whether you want to or not, you are answering this question. So we'll, we'll let you go last so you can yeah. take it all in. You can copy my answer. That's the best thing to do. Just no, repeat what I say. And then, yeah, exactly. No, I, I know right. she can, but she moves, gets a little nervous. The, the thing moves to do, that were made today in the past, well, I guess the, the interviews have taken place over the past week. Are they a clear indication that Rex Ryan is calling the shots here right now, personnel-wise? Wes started up. Uh, I would say no. He wasn't involved in actually any of the hiring process, and that was been stated multiple times. It is. Did they have Rex in mind when they were making these choices? Yes, and I don't like that. Don't like it at all. Francesco, can you repeat the question, sir? <laughs> is sorry. Is are the moves that have been made recently, the hiring of Idzik and Morningweg, yeah. a clear indication that Rex is calling the shots? Um. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't. Now I wouldn't say a clear indication. What I would say more is a an indication that I think Rex does have his hand in the cookie jar as always. So I think that Rex did want guys that he can. Rex wants guys that are going to bring the smarts and sort of like the, the 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 backstage type of stuff. Like deal with the cap, get some guys in, deal with the X's and O's like Morningway can do. And Rex wants to bring that emotional burst onto the scene. And I think that's what he's great at. So I do think he wanted a guy that's not as out you know. 
know, outgoing with everything as right. he is. Yeah. Right. No, nobody's coming in to threaten Rex. I mean, the the, the hirings are obvious. Um, and that's it. And, and and hopefully Rex can take that and and put that on his players. The the the, the threats need to be to the players. Right. They have to. That's that's how you win, okay? Rex has to be calling the shots. Your head coach has to be calling the shots, whether you like Rex or not. That's the position it has to come from, and then the players respond accordingly. And you're right, there is no threat. Marty no. Morningway is not a threat be, to ever be the offense, you know, the, the head coach, and the same exactly. goes with Dennis Thurman. They're not gonna, they're that's not right. threats to be. They all believe yeah. in it. They're gonna have to believe in a, in a Rex way. Chris, we're, yeah, I mean, Chris, if yeah. the question is the moves made today, I'm gonna still say I don't necessarily think that it's all Rex because mm-hmm. they said when they hired Zick that he was gonna get. All, he was going to get final say on that's personnel, saying, and that's yeah. huge for me because I was concerned about that. Yeah. Um, as for the other hires, I think that those were kind of given to, to Rex. So I definitely think you know they're letting him have control. But then when it comes to like, the, I think the delineation of like what nice work you know Ooh. is you know Woody's obviously it's hit him and then hopefully GM and then Rex. Yeah, I agree. I think the uh, and which what I which I didn't like in the first place was I wanted the GM in place and then for him to bring in the offensive staff and let Rex control the defense and it seems as if the morning wag is a Rex Ryan move so I'm a little up in the air about that. I'm uneasy about that a little bit but I don't think Rex had any say in Idzik but I do think Idzik was told that you can have this job but Rex is here so that at the end of the day I think that is what happened. Addy, what do you think? We'll let you uh, put you on the spot here. Was it Rex? Is it all Rex or no Rex? Honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea? I don't think no, anyone does. Let's see. Um, this is a figure. Not, no, there's no guns to your head, really. I have no idea, honestly. Let's just see changes. That's right. Yeah, right. I think that's the other day like on Rex? offense. I do. You do? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Everybody cool. likes Rex. Cool, cool. All right. Now, I want to say one last Sign thing. Off, if, uh, if you guys are looking for a catfish, um, <laughs> I'm offering my services. I charge $100 an hour for phone calls um, I do charge an overnight fee now I what charge 20 for phone calls? like on like wow, overnight you charge extra for extra like overnight if you want to just hear yeah you I mean I'll yeah. sleep on the phone with you so I'll start falling asleep when we're connected and then when, when we wake up I can hear you snoring vice versa oh, nice. but I, I, I do charge apnea which is I do very so I don't know if you're gonna be able to sleep you might have to can you do a nice ladies voice for us it sounds like oh yeah yes. no, <laughs> they oh call me God. Kikia Frank here's your right, teaser thank you to Hans here's your teaser thank you to Hans for skyping Mo Wilkerson obviously for calling in all you guys we got a new GM and a new coordinator let's hopefully let's hope the personnel Ooh. moves are made we'll be back Just next Google week Google Marty time. Morning Wayne. look at the first picture that comes up <laughs> <laughs> I guess everybody else